But it's too late It's too late Gone. You sweater, and I ain't talking about a cool J. You a big L, and I ain't talking about cool J. Right, as Matt walk back to the shop, and this is the next one <coughs> for the materials testing. What have you? What we're going to do is we're going to measure stiffness. So what I have here is um, a, 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 a Hounsfield. So basically, this is a compression and pull tester. It's quite low force. It's not anything crazy. You know, we're not going to start bending bloody. Um, tungsten and with it or anything stupid like that but basically what we can do is we can stick our sample in and basically apply a um, well a constant displacement so this just has a lead screw in it with a motor and what it's going to do is it's going to push our probe which is attached to a load cell this load cell goes up to 250 newtons 250 newtons of force is around about 25 kilos so that's what we're doing in Earth's gravity blah 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 because it's 10 so uh, 250 newtons, about 25 kilos, something like that, on these small samples. I've got it in a V block locked down, and then the V block is all attached. It's not the best setup, I get that, but then we are not doing groundbreaking science here. What it's going to do is it's going to spit out a graph, so you'll be able to see exactly um, what it looks like. So basically, what we have is we have displacement, so this thing's going to basically just crush it at a constant rate and then we'll see how much force. For things that are more flexible, basically bendy, what you'll see is you'll see a lot of displacement as force is added, so it'll bend more. This is how much it's moving per how much force is applied. Something that's very stiff, you'll see basically nearly a vertical line. That means you're applying a lot of force, but the displacement is fuck all. Basically what happens is if something very stiff is, it goes up to 250 newtons really quick, and the displacement's bugger all. So it's constant displacement and uh, what have you. So what we can do is with this is, because I just un undo this um, clamp here, is I can slip in new samples. We're gonna basically butt them up so they're flat with this V block, put them in, lock it down, and then basically apply the same force. So the distance across here, basically it's when it stops there to here. Because that's all locked in place, it doesn't matter. We could put a massive sample in, it doesn't really matter. This is all locked and fixed. So we should be all good. Right then, let's stop fucking around and let's just get on with it. Right then, so what we've got in here first is PA6. All we do is just run the test and rock and roll. So there you can see there, you can see it bending. It's probably going to fucking snap and give way. Jesus. There we go. What have we hit? Okay, let's abort that. I uh, didn't like that, did it? Jesus, that's deflected shitloads. And you see there's our curve of how it bent. Now, there will be a bit of deviation here, a bit of slipping because of how we're touching the end of our probe and stuff. It's not really that important for us here. We're just looking at this graph. And you can see how much that has bent and it's actually got a bit of plastic deformation it's bent over a slight bit all right so love the next one so our next one our next one is balsa let's just go for it uh uh <laughs> All right, she doesn't like it. We've extended too far. Yes, yes, yes. Go or reverse. There we go. Lovely. Right then, so this is uh, polyethylene. This is uh, high density polyethylene. Let's go for it. There we go, we've maxed out on the range. Yes, yes, yes. Shut up. Right then, so the next one is POM. So let's just put and get on with it. That's a lot stiffer. It starts to angle off there when you start to. Um, Yeah. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, oh, for God's sake. Yes, yes, yes. I want you to do it manually. So our next one's carbon fibre. This is our carbon fibre rod. Let's see how this goes. Whoa, look at that. Just straight up there. Straight up to 250 newton metres and fucking hardly basically deflected. Sweet! Right, so the next one we've got is zinc. Let's rock and roll. Oh, there we go. That's 250. There's a bit of a slip there. You see that? That's a slip. But apart from that, we'll be able to get the data from that. Actually, do you know what? Let's run that again. There we go, that's a bit better. Next one we've got is copper. Cool, that's that one, nice and clean. Right, so the next one we've got is our uh, 6082 aluminium. we got that's all we've got there that's all she wrote so next up is magnesium that's your lot sweet so now we're gonna get stuck into our copper alloys and the first one we use is brass so you know the drill by now yeah that's quite stiff isn't it fuck me <laughs> that's what she said next one phosphor bronze Oh, what didn't she like? Shut the fuck up, Jesus Christ. Next one is our, um, oh, copper zirconia chrome stuff. Oh, she seems to have a bit of a fart there. All right then, sweet. Next up is beryllium copper. Ah, yeah, pretty much the same. Next we have cooper nickel. It's a very nice straight one, a bit bumpy where it's rubbing on the surfaces, but all good. Next we've got EN1, which is basically just steel. Quite stiff stuff. Another steel, EN3. Sweet. Next, this is our stainless steel. 303. Yeah, all these graphs now are going to really mean fuck all until we see the comparison. Now we're getting into the meat of it. This is our titanium, and after that we've got our tungsten. Right, so now we're getting to the meat of it. We're uh, this is our titanium. Yeah, awesome. Finally, we're on about as stiff as she gets. This is tungsten carbide. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> That's really quite steep to say some of them were reaching at the one millimetre range. Right then, so that's all that and then the next you'll see of this video will be me comparing the rest of them.